So you want the best controller for your Nintendo Switch. For most people, the standard Joy-Cons that are included in the box do the job just fine. You can play your games handheld, put it on a table and play wirelessly, or even flip them sideways and split them in two for multiplayer games. But the incredible flexibility of the Switch Joy-Cons comes with one very annoying compromise. It doesn't have a traditional D-pad. So even though there are plenty of arcade-style games on the eShop, you're stuck with a controller that makes many of them harder or, quite simply, less fun to play. It's time then to see how the reasonably priced 8-bit Do arcade stick brings back an elegant form of controller for a more civilized age. <laughs> When home consoles weren't powerful enough to run the latest fighting games, your only option was to go to the arcades and play them there. Of course, that meant everyone was playing on a similar style of controller, the most common of which was the arcade stick. Now, it's actually a very simple design. Really, all you need is this lever and these buttons over here, and you only need to do three very basic things. You've got to be big enough to work with a large variety of hand sizes. You've got to be sturdy enough to handle the brainless mashing of buttons all day long. And thirdly, you've got to work with cheap replacement arcade parts. This 8-bit Do arcade stick seems to satisfy all of those conditions, but with its NES retro styling and compact design, is it really ready for online matches or is this $90 controller just a fancy toy for aging Nintendo fans? First, let's talk about why your finger is already hovering over the Buy It Now button. The 8-bit Do is an unapologetic love letter to the Nintendo Famicom, which is better known as the NES in the West. The dark grey, light grey plastic with shiny black, go faster stripe and red buttons is an instant nostalgia trip for middle-aged gamers who had the original console. And to top it all off, the case is tapered at the base, so when viewed from the front, it's even got the same shape. But if you think it's all style over substance, you'd be dead wrong, because the ball top lever and 30mm buttons feel surprisingly close to what you'd expect from industry standard somewhat parts. Even if you do choose to mod it and swap the parts out, they've made sure that the button holes and the mounting plate for the lever are compatible with most arcade replacements. Cheap snap-in arcade buttons or lever parts like the Sanwa JLF fit in no problem at all. And it gets even better. This company has added a feature that other companies wouldn't dare to add. Just press this button and you instantly win the match. Jokes aside, even though macro buttons aren't allowed in tournaments and are certainly frowned upon online, a feature like this can certainly make offline single player fun and potentially useful for one handed or jury players. Sadly, if you play fighting games on Switch, you're already all too used to being a second class citizen. Most of the modern fighting games like Guilty Gear Strive, King of Fighters 15, Tekken 7, and Street Fighter 5 are completely non existent on the system. And even when we do get fighting games, they're the less capable versions, like the Arcade Archives version of KOF 2002 instead of 2002 UM, like on Steam. Or the newest version of Persona 4 Arena, which released this year but won't be getting rollback online netcode support, like its PS4 and PC counterparts. And it's not just games either, with the Nintendo Switch being unable to run most of the games played at local events and tournaments, it's also the console with the weakest selection of arcade sticks to buy. Take this hoary Fighting Edge for instance, you can't use this on the Nintendo Switch unless you've got a special converter and that will cost you an extra $45 on top of the price of the controller, and this already goes for something like $200 alone. Okay, so you're grateful for whatever controllers you can get on the Switch, but why should you choose the 8-bit Do over some of the alternatives? Well, at $90, it's already significantly cheaper than the Hori RAP. It's not officially licensed, but it works without a converter. It doesn't require an official controller to be plugged in to authenticate it. To most casual players, the buttons and lever feel more or less the same as what you would get in the arcades. You can play it wired via USB USB-C cable or wirelessly using not one but two different methods, Bluetooth which you pair just like normal Joy-Cons, or Wi-Fi using the included USB dongle which has its own storage area hidden away under this cable flap. It has a dedicated X input mode for PC users which is great for compatibility and goes beyond anything I've seen with other arcade sticks by using LED labels which change from Switch to Xbox button layout automatically when you flip the input mode selector. And finally, it's big enough to house full-size arcade parts while still being compact enough to fit in your average backpack. 
Much of what I've listed here is actually uncommon on other arcade sticks, and so on paper, the 8-bit dose seems like a pretty obvious purchase. But fancy LEDs and convenience are meaningless if it doesn't perform well in actual gameplay, and that's where I have a few concerns. But it's all well and good if the controller makes claims like compatibility with Sunwa parts or 40 hours of battery life while using the wireless dongle. But if you can't use it to do combos or jump exactly when and where you want to, the extra features don't really matter. All right, so the first thing you'll notice when you pick up this 8-bit dough arcade stick is that, you know, how nostalgic is it to have a great big lever here and buttons that you can press, you know, arcade style, just like your favorite arcade games and fighting games. But when you get into some actual fighting games, you start to figure out some of the more minute details, like the fact that because it's quite compact, it does actually move around quite a lot. And so I don't know if you can see my legs here, but it doesn't really fit on my legs unless I have my legs together like this. If I have my legs comfortably set apart, it looks like it sits quite comfortably, but then you look at the base of the stick and it's actually because it's tapered down to a, a, a point like this. The actual surface area of the stick is actually quite a bit narrower than what you see here on the top. No problem, you can just hold your legs closer together like this or, you know, a bit like this. And even if you hold your legs kind of like this, it does sort of balance here, but this is where it starts to become a thing. Although we do have some padding on the bottom, unfortunately you don't have padding all over the bottom. It doesn't really stay put if you have it like balancing in between your legs because eventually the only part of the stick that's touching your leg is the angled part of the stick on the base here. Keeping it steady in your lap is already one slight issue but then on top of that even though it is a fairly weighty stick you know they've got quite a lot of extra metal inside the stick to make it feel heavier and higher quality one weird thing about the stick is that when you press up and down it really shakes a lot more than other sticks that i've tried so i've got other sticks like the kwamba drone which is a similar size but for whatever reason it doesn't rotate up and down as much as this stick does. When I'm up in the sky, if I press down, down twice, I can actually fall down a little more quickly than usual. You know, I'm doing it quite quickly and I'm not thinking too hard in the middle of a match about whether my stick is staying in place. I want all of that stuff to be taken care of for me so I can just focus on getting the inputs out. But when I just do stuff like this, if I'm not careful about holding my wrist on the stick to keep it from moving around, the whole stick will eventually just shift its way diagonal until the whole stick is at a different angle and of course if your stick actually does change angle while you're using it then when you press forward like this you're not actually pressing forward anymore now you're pressing diagonal down so if i'm being very careful to hold the stick in place we can usually get this combo to work But that's when I'm being quite conscious. Basically, I feel like when you're playing a fighting game or any kind of competitive game, you want to be focused on just the game. Now, I do have a theory about why this might be happening on this stick rather than other sticks which are of a similar size and shape. And I feel like it's because the, the lever and the buttons are a little bit closer to the center line of the stick. Usually for a stick of this size, you might have the lever a little bit higher up and the buttons a little bit higher up. And as a result, you've got more wrist space. There are two reasons why that kind of helps, right? I've got not much wrist space. My, my wrist is actually kind of falling off the side of the stick while I play. I can curl my hand around the lever to make it kind of fit, but it, it does feel a bit cramped. I feel like it could be moved up here to the top of the stick. The second reason why that's important is that when you've got a lever here in the middle of the stick, if it's right in the middle, then pushing forward will rock the stick upward like this, and pressing down will rock the stick like this. But if you've got it up here at the top of the stick, you've got more pivot points basically. You can kind of prevent the stick from rocking backwards and forwards just by naturally having your wrist hold the stick in place. While we're on the topic of the position of the lever and the buttons, this is kind of a non-standard position. Now, there's nothing wrong with the way that this stuff has been positioned, but it's a little bit different to what I'm used to. There's like the, the Vulix layout and the Noir layout. Those are the two most common layouts that you'll find. The lever is actually positioned quite a fair way over to the left. If I position it on my lap, carefully. Now the whole thing is like slip, shifted very slightly, maybe like an inch or so to the left. And so I kind of want it to be in the middle. You end up with the whole stick kind of balancing, you know, on one leg here and then on the tapered part of the stick here. If however you've never played on other arcade sticks, then maybe being slightly over to the left probably won't even matter to you because you won't even notice. 
All right, so I've loaded up some BB Tag. Highly recommend this game if you're into fighting games or even if you're not. It's got some simple fighting game combos, but it's also got some of the more complex stuff as well. There are some combos that are just a lot. You don't even like press the stick. There's not a whole lot of motion on the left. But this combo in particular does have quite a lot of movement and it's also got an instant air dash. So because of that, I like to see how much that affects the stick moving around. Whew, okay, that took a little while to do. <laughs> so I feel like the main thing that made this a little bit more difficult was one, I wanted the stick to be a little bit closer to like the middle of my hands here because I'm just more used to that for the Viewlix layout. Secondly, just not having the palm room meant that instead of having my, my hand resting comfortably, my palm is kind of falling off the stick here. I had to have my hand kind of crunched in like this and that massively changes your, your muscle memory and just the way that you play the game. And I think Although you could learn to use a stick like this with a very cramped amount of wrist space, I don't really feel like it's it's necessary. I feel like in a way, you're kind of making the game more difficult than it needs to be. You may have noticed that I've actually changed some of these buttons out. These gray ones and this red one here, these are all Sanwa Denshi pots. This is actually a Sanwa lever with a separate attachment that allows it to be a little bit more convenient for portability so I can actually just take the lever out like this but these buttons are exactly what you find in most arcades in Japan you know, for fighting games. When I have them lined up side by side if I close my eyes I cannot tell the difference whatsoever. Maybe the travel on these 8-bit dough buttons, they're not quite as smooth as the Sanwa buttons and they do feel like they're of a slightly lighter plastic. Like, yes, you can swap Sanwa parts into it, but it won't make as big a difference as I, as you may think it's going to make. Whatever metal plate they've got in here, whatever it is, it doesn't feel quite as solid a top as some of the other sticks that I've been trying. What I noticed when I put these Sanwa buttons into the Quanba drone, because of the rigidity of the plastic of that stick, like the, the Sanwa buttons actually feel different in that stick compared to this one. So it's kind of like these Sanwa style buttons on the bottom here. They can't make a cheaper arcade case feel higher quality, but Sanwa buttons, like if you put them into a higher quality case, a more rigid case rather, then the quality of that case will really translate through the Sanwa buttons and you really feel the difference. Now actually on the topic of changing the buttons in the stick, you may think that you can just flip the stick over and undo these six screws, but you would be wrong because these screws do not use a normal screwdriver. It uses something called a Torx screwdriver. And so you're going to need to use something that looks like this. It's like an Allen key, but with scooped edges. It's not expensive. I paid like $10 and I got a set of 10 different screwdrivers. So just make sure you order this in advance if you're planning to do mods immediately after buying this stick. And actually, while I've got this stick flipped over, I just want to point out that although there is a flap here for the cable, there's no actual cable storage. Now on some sticks, that's a problem. So you've got like this cable jutting out of the stick and then you just have to kind of like wind it around the stick like this. But because this is a removable cable, I think this is actually kind of forgivable. You don't really need cable storage if you could just pull the cable out and just put it somewhere else, like in a different compartment of your rucksack. Flip out the Wi-Fi dongle here. Just plug this into the switch. All right, and then I believe I switched this over to 2.4G, which is the wireless mode, not Bluetooth. And we are back into the game. Again, feels exactly the same. Seems the same to me. All right, well, it's time to maybe wrap up some thoughts on the 8-bit Do arcade stick. This thing's actually been out for a little while now, and the thing is, it's actually jam-packed with features, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't find on many other controllers and at a price which is sub $100, which is really quite impressive. You probably won't see this at a lot of tournaments and the main reason is that it's for the Switch and most people aren't playing fighting games on the Switch. And even if they are, they're only really using it as like a training mode tool. But if you're looking for a stick that you really only need to use at home and is also compatible with your PC, it is actually definitely worth a look for the price because $90 gets you an arcade stick with a full-size lever, full-size buttons, macro features, wired and wireless, two different types of wireless feature. You can use it on your Switch or on your PC. You've got this little flap on the back. It comes with a wireless dongle, which you can actually store in here. The cable is removable. So even if it breaks, you can replace it with 
any old USB to USB-A cable. And to top it all off, you can actually open this thing up and you can modify it with other levers and buttons. Now, I would say that the first thing that I would do is replace the stick. Because even though after I modded it, I thought, hey, the Sunridge ALF is really not that different to this, when I went back to the original stick on the 8-bit toe, so not the Sunridge lever, I was like, wow, this thing is very, very loose. And as a result, when you flick it down, it will accidentally kind of ricochet and, and flick back up. And that's just kind of frustrating when it's like, you just need a slightly more tense stick. You might actually be able to just modify the spring on this without having to actually swap out the entire unit. But when it comes to the buttons, yes, they do feel a bit cheaper than Sunwa's, but when you put Sunwa buttons into this stick, they still feel like cheaper buttons. And it's because the case, although it is nice and weighty, whatever the top plate they're using on here, it doesn't feel as solid as some other sticks. So it's like, the quality of the Sanwa buttons doesn't really shine through. Now, one more thing I should probably point out about the buttons is that although you can put any buttons in here that will fit the 30 millimeter hole, you won't be able to put certain buttons in like these screw type buttons. Now, the thing about screw type buttons is that they don't break when you take them out. When you put them into the stick, you just tighten them into place with this screw thread. But when you snap in buttons, there is a very large risk that they're going to break when you pull them out. Now there are special tools like this one. You can actually use this to get snap-in buttons to come out without snapping the little plastic tabs on them. But this tool doesn't work on the 8-bit do. And the reason is that it's just too cramped on the inside. And this is again, where it's kind of like form over function. In order to have these LEDs show up right next to the buttons, they've put the LED circuit boards right next to these buttons. And so as a result, these screw type sleeves just get in the way and they prevent the button from sitting into the hole properly. And I think one more thing I want to point out about the stick in general is that although it has on paper all of the features that you kind of require a stick to have and at a really reasonable price, the thing about the design of it is that the stick is weirdly off to the left side and the buttons are kind of a little bit too close to the center. And so when I have it balanced on my lap in a way that it doesn't fall off my legs, I feel like my hands, instead of coming in like this, I have to like turn my elbow in a little bit like this. And I did find that when I was recording the footage for this video, I was practicing a bunch of combos and eventually this part of my wrist did actually start to hurt. If you're absolutely certain that you're not going to be using this controller to play competitive fighting games at local events, tournaments, or online during matches, then honestly speaking, this is quite a good product that ticks all of the right boxes. The only thing is, if you are going to be playing competitive fighting games, know that this probably won't work at most tournaments anyway, so this is not what you want, but you will be able to use this on your PC. So if you're only sitting at home playing online fighting games, it really does do the trick. The only thing I think is that if you are certain that you are going to be playing lots more fighting games, do consider getting a stick that has more space here, so more, more wrist room, and also just having the whole stick kind of placed better so that when it's balanced on your lap, your hands aren't shifted over to the side like this. Your left hand needs the wrist space and your right hand, if it's at the wrong angle, you can end up feeling a lot of pain. And well, pain is basically what leads up to injury and we certainly don't want that. Well, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this little review of this controller. It's already been out for quite a long time, but it's one that I've had my eye on for a long time and always wondered whether it was something I should check out. And certainly for this price, it offers you a lot more than many of the arcade sticks out there do, even for the PS4 or for your Xbox. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the little subscribe button. It's free. You can also watch me on Twitch. I'm often streaming with products that I review here on the channel channel and testing things out and also fielding questions if you've got any other questions about the controller how it feels to use certain questions you may have about modifying certain parts on it and finally you can also join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord which is a community of a couple thousand people so far who are interested in gear looking at arcade sticks or if you're interested in drawing we have a weekly art prompt all sorts of community type events where we interact online so be sure to click that and you can follow me on twitter if you want the latest updates that's all for me i'm going to enjoy some arcade fighting games on my nintendo switch with my now wireless arcade stick kind of excited about that looking forward to seeing you all in the next nihongo gamer video until then i'll see you around